If you take pride in owning the very best, then you've just made an excellent decision. You've acquired a Range Rover, the finest four-wheel drive sport utility vehicle in the world. Range Rover is an authentic 4x4 made by Land Rover, which is dedicated to manufacturing only four-wheel drive vehicles. For over 50 years, Land Rovers have been the choice for adventures and expeditions around the world. They're sold in over 100 countries where people need rugged, reliable, go-anywhere transportation. The Range Rover is peerless. It has superior off-road capability, unmatched on-road ride and handling, and sophisticated state-of-the-art performance and comfort features. I'm Sally Eastwood from Land Rover North America. We want you to thoroughly enjoy your new Range Rover, and the best way to get started is by reading your owner's manual. It's still the most comprehensive guide to understanding all of the systems and functions of the vehicle. But sometimes it's helpful to learn by watching. And so we're going to demonstrate how to operate some of the systems of your Range Rover in this video. But this is not a substitute for reading the manual. And many times you'll be reminded to consult it for a more thorough explanation. We've designed this video to be watched from beginning to end. Or, if you're looking for specific information, a chapter at a time. All the chapters are listed on the back of the video sleeve. They cover getting comfortable, safety and security, instruments, controls and message center, the audio system, the navigation system, the climate control system, stowing and towing, design hallmarks, the transmission and four-wheel drive, ABS, electronic air suspension, and FYI, some details that make good sense. Notice the number in the upper right. That indicates the current chapter and is a handy way to search for the right topic. We've asked some Land Rover driving instructors to demonstrate the features of Range Rover. They spend a lot of time teaching owners how to get the most enjoyment out of their vehicles. And when they're not teaching, they're out for wheeling. There's so much to learn, so let's get started. We'll begin with settling in. Whether you take a long trip or something a bit shorter, it's important to be comfortable. The 10-way power seats can be adjusted when the ignition is off and the door open. Or if the door is closed, the ignition must be in position 1 or 2. You can adjust the lower seat cushion, the seat back, and the headrest. Lumbar support. To set the memory buttons, first depress the main memory switch. Then simultaneously press either memory button 1 or 2. The memory function will also store side view mirror adjustments and instrument panel light levels in one of two memory settings. The setting will be confirmed in the message center. Instrument panel lights are adjusted using the rocker switch on top of the turn signal stalk. Side view mirrors are adjusted using these two switches on the center console. Move the slider left or right and adjust the mirror in four directions. The mirrors also have two positions which can be adjusted manually and are designed to fold in for car washes and narrow stretches off-road. And when shifting into reverse, the side view mirrors tilt down to let you see what's behind the vehicle when backing up. For night driving, the rear view mirror will automatically dim to reduce glare from vehicles in the rear. The full explanation of how to adjust seats, mirrors and use the memory system is in the owner's manual. To adjust the steering wheel, pull the lever toward you and hook your thumbs around the rim of the steering wheel and move it in and out, up and down. Then release the lever. The window switches are located in the center console, with the switches for the front windows, the most frequently used ones, conveniently placed on the top. 
Press and hold the bottom of the switch to lower and the top to raise. All four windows have a one touch down feature as well. Press firmly and then release and the windows will open fully. The front windows have an instant up feature. To stop at any time, quickly press the button for the opposite direction. All windows have an anti-trap feature to keep hands and arms from being caught. When it senses a blockage, it reverses itself and then stops. A message will appear in the message center telling you there's been a blockage. This is an important safety feature. And remember, the windows can still be operated up to 45 seconds after the ignition is turned off as long as no door is opened. This 45 second delay works for the sunroof as well. The sunroof is controlled by a switch on the center console. It features a similar one-touch open and close operation and has anti-trap protection. Even though your Range Rover is equipped with dual front airbags and side airbags on the front seats as well, they are not a replacement for seat belts, which should be worn at all times. Remember, do not use seat covers on the front seats that are not Land Rover approved for use with side airbags. To adjust the height of the seat belt, push the button to raise or lower. The belt should sit between your shoulder and neck. It's very important for all occupants to wear their safety belts properly. For additional security, the front belts are equipped with pretensioners, which work in conjunction with the SRS. Please read the owner's manual for a complete discussion of these safety systems. There are other safety features engineered into the Range Rover. We'll take a look at them in the next chapter. Protecting small passengers is very important. There are child locks on the two rear doors to prevent opening from the inside. To lock out operation of the back windows, press this switch on the center console. To reactivate, press again. The Range Rover is equipped with a system which allows deactivation of the inertia seat belt mechanism to facilitate installation of a child seat. Remember to follow the seat manufacturer's installation instructions. It is especially important that children of all ages be properly buckled up and should ride in the rear seat wherever possible. Pull the belt out all the way to temporarily disengage the inertial mechanism. Feed it through, grab the buckle and insert the latch. Then let the belt retract until it locks with a clicking sound. It's important that children, especially those in a rear-facing child seat, never be placed in the front seat. Also note the warnings posted on the top of the passenger sun visor. See your owner's manual for a detailed discussion of airbags and child seats. Along with airbags, Range Rover is engineered to provide additional protection in case of accidents. The side doors have impact beams and are designed to stay latched in the event of a side impact. And in many kinds of accidents, a fuel cutoff switch will automatically turn off the electronic fuel pump. In an emergency, when the vehicle is stopped, use your warning lights. All direction indicator lights will flash, and they will automatically engage in the event of a severe frontal impact. Range Rover has a sophisticated electronic security system controlled by two remote transmitters and keys labeled 1 and 2. The vehicle can be unlocked using either the key or the remote transmitter but the system has been designed to primarily use the remote transmitter. That's why there's only one door lock and it's located on the driver's door. Press the lock button to lock the vehicle and set the alarm sensors on the hood, doors and tailgate. This will also immobilize the engine. For maximum security, super locking is recommended. To do this, press the lock button twice quickly. The turn signals will flash three times to confirm that it is superlocked. With the windows closed, the interior motion detector will scan the inside of the vehicle for any movement, and if there is none, it will then set the deadlocks and interior alarm. This is the most secure condition, making it impossible to manually unlock the doors from inside the vehicle, even if someone breaks the glass. It's good practice to superlock your Range Rover each time you leave the vehicle.
If the door is not closed when locking, you'll hear a warning beep and the location will be shown in the message center. If you should inadvertently unlock the vehicle and then not open a door or insert the key in the ignition system, the vehicle will relock automatically after 60 seconds. Here's another feature. When unlocking, you can use the key operated memory feature. Pushing and holding the unlock button on key 1 will move the seats and mirrors to the positions preset for memory position 1. The same applies for key number 2. Read your owner's manual to thoroughly understand all safety and security systems. Now we'll review instruments, the message center and controls. There's a full complement of gauges, including coolant temperature, speedometer, odometer, trip odometer reset button, tachometer, and the fuel gauge. When starting up, the warning lights go through a self-check routine, but should all be out before the vehicle is driven off, with the exception of the amber ABS warning light, which goes out when the vehicle exceeds 5 miles per hour. The message center is designed to keep the driver informed with up to 150 vehicle condition reports, from critical warnings to reminding you when to refill the washer bottle. You should consult your owner's manual if any warning light or message center warning remains on. The lighting switch is located on the right hand side of the dashboard. Turn to the first position for parking and tail lights. Turn to the second position for the headlights. You can activate a 25 second headlight delay by turning off the engine before turning off the headlight switch. This will leave the lights on so that you can see your way when leaving the vehicle. The message center will let you know the delay function is operating. With the headlights on low beam, this button turns on the front fog lights. The next button is for the rear fog lights. The left stalk on the steering column controls several functions. Move up and down for direction indicators. Pull the stalk towards you for high and low beams. To adjust the level of illumination on the instrument panel, move the rocker switch left or right. There are two additional buttons at the end of the stalk. The top button controls the audible speed warning signal, which can be set to indicate when a selected speed is exceeded. Again, see the manual for full details. This lower button is for the trip computer. Push repeatedly until trip 2 is displayed. Then push and hold to reset the trip odometer to zero. During a trip, you can monitor range to empty, fuel economy and average speed. Remember, the calculated data comes from the trip 2 odometer, not the main odometer which is reset with the button on the instrument panel. The stalk on the right of the steering column controls the washers and wipers for the front and rear windows. The bottom button controls the washers for the windshield and the top one is for the rear window. And there is a selection of wiper speeds from intermittent to fast. To turn on the rear window intermittent wiper, pull the lever toward you. Intermittent speeds for both front and rear wipers are adjusted by this rocker switch. If the front wipers are working and you shift into reverse, the rear window wiper will automatically activate to provide a clearer view while backing up. With headlights on, the headlight wash wipe will automatically run on every second use of the front windshield washer to keep the headlights clean. If the windshield washer fluid is low, the message center will advise you and the Range Rover will automatically cut back the consumption of washer fluid until the reservoir is refilled. The cruise control master switch activates the system, which is then operated with buttons located on the steering wheel. Above the rearview mirror is the map light and interior light unit. The center button turns the lights on and off. If you'd like to have the interior lights stay off, push and hold this button until a beep is heard. And the message center will confirm that the interior lights are off. To reactivate them, push and hold the button and the message center will confirm that they're on again.
When the doors or tailgate are open, the interior lights will shut off after 10 minutes. Range Rover has a state-of-the-art electronic sound system featuring AM FM stereo, weather band, audio cassette player and six disc remote CD changer. It has tremendous capability and you should read your owner's manual for complete details. Here's an overview of the major controls. Press to turn on the system and rotate to control the volume. Volume can also be controlled by these buttons on the steering wheel. Press the audio selection button to select bass, treble, subwoofer, balance and fade and fine tune by rotating the volume button. This button also selects the DSP mode. DSP means Digital Sound Processor. This enables sound settings to be set accordingly with the number of passengers. There are three modes of operation. In driver mode, sound staging will be central to the driving position. If more than one person is traveling, spatial mode creates a larger room ambience. The system can also be turned off. The FM band button switches between FM1 and FM2. The AM button selects AM1, AM2 and the weather band, which receives the nearest NOAA weather information. As dry air continues to feed in from the west, a weaker storm system will move from the... The six preset buttons will store 12 FM and 12 AM stations of your choice. Or you can use Auto Store, which allows rapid storing of the strongest signals on the AM2 and FM2 presets. To tune manually on any band, press the manual button and tune up or down. To tune automatically, deselect manual for seek mode and tune up or down. Press scan and the radio will stop at each station for 5 seconds. Here's a very convenient feature. Your Range Rover now has Radio Data System or RDS capability. Press the Information button which selects Program Type or PTY. This allows the radio to receive data from local stations identifying entertainment category and station call letters. Use the Tuning buttons to select one of 22 categories. Press Information again and the system will automatically find a station broadcasting your preference. This new technology may not be available with all stations in an area. Refer to the audio manual for complete details. With the radio on, insert a tape and the system will switch to tape mode. Use manual mode to fast forward and rewind. Press again to stop. In automatic mode, the search button will seek to the next track or return to the start of the current one. Scan plays the first 10 seconds of each track. This button will switch play to the other side. For Dolby B noise reduction, press button number 1. The CD player is located in the cargo area and can hold six CDs. Insert the magazine with the arrow facing up. With the system turned on, press the CD button. To play CDs 1 through 6, press the corresponding number. You can skip to the next track or back to the beginning of the current one. Or use manual mode to fast forward and back through a track and press scan to listen to the first 10 seconds of each. The functions can also be operated by the remote on the steering wheel. See the owner's manual for more information. With the system so versatile it would be a pity not to put it to good use.
Next, the navigation system. Your Range Rover may be equipped with a satellite navigation system using the Global Positioning System or GPS. A detailed description can be found in the Owner's Manual. The navigation system control is located in the center of the dashboard just above the audio system. It comprises the navigation display screen, the rotary select knob and control buttons. The mapping information is stored on a CD and is loaded on the navigation computer located on the right hand side of the luggage compartment. Once the CD is loaded, there is no need to remove it unless you're traveling outside the country not covered by the CD. The satellite receiving antenna is located on the front hood near the right windshield wiper. Metal objects placed near the antenna may interfere with the operation of the navigation system. With the engine running or the ignition key in the on position, turn the control knob to the right to activate the navigation system. The main menu should appear. The navigation system operation is based on a series of menus, much like a personal computer. Turn the rotary knob until road navigation is highlighted. Press the knob to select. An information screen will appear. Read the advice and press the knob again to continue the input destination screen will appear. Remember, adjusting the navigation system controls should only be done when your Range Rover is parked and you can give your full attention to the information screen. Your owner's manual offers complete detail on the operation of the navigation system. As you get to know your navigation system, you will realize its enormous capabilities. To select a destination, highlight and select City. Choose the name of the destination by entering the letters or selecting Index and choose your destination from the list provided. Enter your destination address the same way you entered the destination city. After you've entered your destination city and street, select Directions. Your destination will be confirmed. You may now select your directions via the route map or the audio instruction. Audio instruction will still be given when the map display is active. The route guidance display will appear including the distance and direction. The Range Rover navigation system also provides location information while you're off-road. To access your location and desired destination while off-road, go to the main menu and select off-road navigation. An information screen appears. It offers a compass display, a full data display, a reduced data display, or map display. Remember it will not tell you about terrain conditions or obstacles. The map display gives you a map of the surrounding area. Your position is shown as a blue circle and a triangle inside indicates your direction of travel. By marking waypoints along your off-road route and then setting the navigation system to reverse direction, you can retrace your route to your point of origin. While on or off-road, always remember to stop before making adjustments to the navigation system. There's one more important feature of the navigation system. If you are lost or in need of emergency assistance, you can select Emergency from the main menu. The on-screen display will show your longitude and latitude and instruct you to dial 911 or the Land Rover Customer Assistance Helpline. For more information, refer to the navigation chapter of your owner's manual. Range Rover has a very sophisticated climate control system that will automatically maintain a preset temperature. It can also be set manually for reasonable individual comfort levels of driver and passenger. We recommend allowing the system to function automatically. It's the simplest method of operation and is preferable in most conditions. Press the Auto button and air distribution and blower speeds are adjusted automatically to achieve and maintain approximate desired temperatures. 
To manually adjust air distribution to the vents, select one of the distribution buttons. Driver and passenger can select approximate individual temperature settings with their own controls. Press the up arrow to increase temperature and the down arrow to decrease it. Adjust the fan speed with the rotary knob, clockwise to increase and counterclockwise to decrease speed. To turn off the air conditioning, press the AC OFF button. The system will attempt to maintain the preset temperature, but if it's unable to do so, the light above the button will flash for about 10 seconds. Press the AC button again to restart. For maximum cooling, set both temperature controls to the lowest temperature. Low will appear on the display. Adjust the fan to high and push the air recirculation button. This prevents fresh air intake and recirculates and cools the interior air. In cold weather, use the heating system to defrost, demist and keep the interior comfortable. For maximum heating, adjust both temperature controls up to high the fan to high and vents to face level. For defrosting, touch the program button. This sets the temperature to high, activates the windscreen and rear window heaters and directs heated air to the defroster. It's even sensitive enough to delay increase of the fan speed until the engine is warm. The remainder of the buttons on the climate control panel relate to cold weather operation. Press this one to activate the electrically heated windscreen and this to activate the electrically heated rear window. The electrically heated front seats are controlled by these two buttons. In the next chapter, we'll look at stowing and towing. Range Rover is designed to carry large items in the cargo area. The rear window and tailgate are controlled by the same button. Push it once to raise the tailgate window. Push it again to lower the tailgate. The load space cover can be folded in a Z-fold, flat folded, or it can be removed completely by pulling it toward you and flipping it up. To make more room, push the button, fold the backrest, and then the entire seat forward. With the rear seats down, you can carry even more gear. Your Range Rover provides security for off-road use with recovery loops built right into the frame and is set up for towing with a Class 3 trailer hitch receiver and a plug for a wiring harness. See the owner's manual for information on proper towing. The spare tire is located under the floor along with all the necessary tools. Loosen the bolt and pull out the spare with the provided sling. Or if you prefer, simply call the 24-hour Land Rover Road Recovery Service. Thinking of doing some off-roading? Perhaps not something as rigorous as this, but rest assured, every Range Rover is designed to stand up to tough off-pavement conditions. That's why Land Rovers have been around for 50 years. That's what makes them legendary. Their superior components and engineering make Range Rovers extremely capable. Here's a brief look at the design hallmarks. Start with a solid foundation. Land Rover engineers believe 4x4s need a rugged steel frame to withstand the punishment of vigorous off-roading. They specify a box section frame. The welded steel monocoque underbody is mounted to the chassis at rubber body mounting points to insulate passengers from noise and vibration, providing a smooth passenger car-like ride. Combined with aluminum body panels, this creates a lower center of gravity for better handling. Another key ingredient for superior off-roading capability is the ability to clear many obstacles. Note the clean profile of Range Rover's undercarriage. All undercarriage components are located inside the frame where they're safe and protected from obstacles. The location of the two differentials is also noteworthy. 
On Range Rover, they are lined up one behind the other, providing uniform clearances from front to back, and they are offset from the centre so that tall obstacles can be more easily passed under the passenger side of the vehicle. The suspension of your sport utility makes it extremely versatile. It not only provides a smooth ride and short-footed handling, but it can also support heavy loads. And most importantly for a 4x4, it can get you through terrain that bears little resemblance to roads in your neighbourhood. Range Rover uses a unique air suspension system to answer all these needs. In off-road conditions, it provides long wheel travel to help keep all four wheels on the ground for maximum traction. And finally, power is a very important factor. Range Rover's V8 engine provides all it's needed for carrying approved heavy loads and meeting off-road demands head-on. Of course, the four-wheel drive system is key to off-road prowess. That's coming up in the next chapter. The transmission and four-wheel drive system in the Range Rover give it superior on- and off-road capability. There's nothing you need to do to enjoy the added security of four-wheel drive control. It's permanently engaged. There are two ranges indicated on either side of the H-gate shifter of the four-speed automatic transmission. The left side is for high range, the right side is for low range. The shift lever has a two-stage release. The first position is for normal gear changes. The second is deeper and is used for shifting between high and low range. To shift out of park, the engine must be running and the brake pedal depressed. If these two conditions are not met, shift interlock will prevent movement of the shift lever. Remember, the foot must be on the brake to shift out of park. Press to the first position and shift. Although in day-to-day -day driving you will normally be using high range, it's important for you to know how to shift in and out of low range. First, the vehicle must be stopped. Press the release lever to position 2 and shift into neutral. When the beeping and the flashing lights stop, move the lever into the desired gear. During shifting, observe the message center display for transmission status. The owner's manual will give you detailed information as to which gear to use in off-road conditions depending on road surface and terrain. Please read it thoroughly. The transition back to high range works the same as the shift to low. Once again, the vehicle must be stopped. This is very important. Shift into neutral and pause. Press firmly to position 2 and slide the lever across the gate into high range. Wait for the beeping and flashing lights to stop. Select the appropriate gear. A handy feature of the Range Rover transmission is the mode switch. In high range, it's used to select the sport mode for quicker downshifts and maximum engine power. The message center will indicate the mode. In low range, you can use manual mode to hold the transmission in the selected gear. See the owner's manual for more details on this. Here's another nice feature. There's no detent between drive and third, so you can shift manually for quicker downshifts. We've produced a companion video, which you should be receiving shortly, detailing how the transmission is used when driving off-road. One last note. When leaving the vehicle, the transmission must be shifted to park before the key can be removed from the ignition switch. Now let's move on to ABS and traction control. Range Rover is equipped with a sophisticated all-terrain anti-lock braking system. ABS helps prevent the wheels from locking under hard braking conditions as well as on loose and low traction surfaces. Under normal braking, ABS is not activated. However, if the braking situation requires ABS, the system will automatically engage to assist in preventing skidding and maintaining steering control. When the ABS system is engaged, the brakes will rapidly pulse to help prevent the brakes from locking and your Range Rover from skidding. You may hear a clicking sound and feel a pulsing sensation in the brake pedal. 
This is entirely normal and says that ABS is working. ABS clicking may also be heard during normal braking on some uneven or loose surfaces. Don't worry, this also is normal. It's important to remember that in order for ABS to work properly, you must maintain strong, steady pressure on the brake pedal. Don't pump the brakes. This actually can lengthen the stopping distance. And don't forget to steer, even when braking. This technique is the same for any ABS-equipped vehicle. A component of the ABS system is four-wheel electronic traction control. Range Rover was the first sport utility vehicle in the world to introduce rear-wheel traction control. The system maximizes low-speed traction by automatically applying the brake to any spinning wheel, thereby transferring power to the wheels with better grip. Keep in mind, while ABS and traction control are important features, the laws of nature and physics cannot be overridden by any system, no matter how sophisticated. Drive within the limits conditions allow and read the section on ABS and traction control in your owner's manual. Range Rover was the first vehicle in the world with electronically controlled height adjustable air suspension. The system will also monitor the loading of the vehicle and assist in leveling it automatically. This is particularly useful when towing or carrying lots of gear. It'll change the ride height of the vehicle for different conditions. Most of the time the system can be left on automatic or the driver can manually change the ride height to suit specific driving needs. This is the Electronic Air Suspension System Control Center. Ride Height Selector Switch, Ride Height Indicator Lights, and the Inhibit Switch. From lowest to highest, the suspension settings are Access, Low, Standard, and High. There is one higher setting called Extended, which activates automatically under certain rare off-road conditions and can't be accessed manually. You'll find a thorough explanation of all these settings in the owner's manual. In the automatic mode, the Range Rover will only move between standard and low ride height depending on how fast you drive. Right now, it's in standard ride height. The steady light next to the symbol confirms this. Access height, the lowest level, is about the same as most passenger cars. To move to access height, shift to park, take your foot off the brake and keep all doors and tailgate closed. Press the down arrow. The light next to the access symbol will flash, indicating the height to which the vehicle is adjusting. When the light is steady, the vehicle is at access ride height. Access height can be selected up to 40 seconds before stopping, but the vehicle won't lower until park is selected and the foot brake is released. Access can also be selected up to 40 seconds after the engine has been turned off. This is the only height change that can be selected without the engine running. Here are a few important points. If your foot is on the brake when you're selecting the ride height, it will not accept the input. Your foot has to be off the brake. The vehicle will rise only when the engine is running. It will not change height if the foot is on the brake or the doors or tailgate are open. When shifting to drive, the vehicle automatically moves up to the standard ride height position. The light flashes as the vehicle is rising and becomes steady once it's reached standard ride height. The Range Rover will stay in this position for most on-road driving. Once speed exceeds 50 miles per hour for over 30 seconds, the vehicle will automatically lower about an inch from standard ride height to the low ride height. This provides better aerodynamics for highway use. When the vehicle slows below 50 miles an hour for 30 seconds, the height will automatically return to standard. To use high profile, the vehicle must be traveling under 35 miles per hour or be stopped. Press the up arrow on the ride height selector switch. Usually this is chosen in an off-road situation for clearing obstacles or driving through deep snow or water. For more details, see the owner's manual.
The inhibit switch has two functions. It can lock the suspension into some height settings or permit manual selection of others. For example, to prevent any height changes, press the inhibit switch while the vehicle is in the standard ride height. This is recommended for towing. The electronic height adjustable air suspension system makes the Range Rover an extremely versatile sport utility vehicle. Most of the time, you will probably use the standard and access ride heights. But take time to learn how to use the full system potential by reading the owner's manual. Now for some final housekeeping items. Your Range Rover should receive routine services at your local dealer. In addition, each owner should make a number of simple checks regularly. These are covered in the owner's manual, but here's a quick overview of a few points. To open the fuel door, the engine must be off. The button for the fuel door is located on the left. Push the button and the fuel door will open on the right side. Fuse boxes are located at the base of the front passenger seat and in the engine compartment. To open the hood, first pull the interior release lever. The safety catch is located between the words Range and Rover. Reach in, press it and lift. Whenever working under the hood, use caution with moving parts and beware if the engine is hot. The second fuse box is between the battery compartment and the coolant reservoir. Here's the engine oil filler cap, washer fluid reservoir, power steering fluid reservoir, and engine oil dipstick. This is the air filter, conveniently located for periodic inspections in dusty off-road conditions. To lower the hood, first make sure all persons and objects are clear. Then pull down, push up, and then close. Knowing how to operate your Range Rover is really just the beginning. There's a lot more to the ownership experience. Ask your Land Rover retailer about off-roading events. And be sure to inquire about Land Rover's two off-road driving schools at the Equinox Resort in Manchester, Vermont and the Greenbrier Resort in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. Experienced instructors will teach you everything from the basics to advanced four-wheel technique. There's a growing number of Land Rover centers with a dedicated staff specially trained to sell and service our four-wheel drive products. Drop in to say hi and pick up your gear designed for the Land Rover lifestyle. As an owner, you have the opportunity to join other enthusiasts for Land Rover adventures. Travel to some of the most fascinating regions of the world and learn advanced techniques from our own expert driving instructors. There are Land Rover clubs around North America staging local adventures. Now that you own this superbly capable vehicle, go out and enjoy it. Try the features we've talked about and don't forget to read your owner's manual. Range Rover is the finest four-wheel drive sport utility vehicle in the world. The product of Land Rover Engineering. Built for adventure. Able to take you anywhere you could imagine.